Well, I'd like to welcome you to Mental Health Day. If you're not familiar with the channel, my name is Kurt. Sitting behind me is my 1980 Sears Sea Nymph aluminum flat bottom John Boat. I bought this thing on Craigslist about 15 years ago for $500. To this day, it has been the best $500 I have ever spent in my entire life. I've had so much joy on this thing. Bring the family out, feeding the family with it. We have caught thousands of fish on this thing. You know, brought it out for striper fishing, brought it out snakehead fishing, everything in between. This boat is an absolute workhorse. We have caught countless bushels of crabs on this thing and she keeps going strong, which is good because crabs are very expensive and we eat them all summer long. Over the years, we've done a few upgrades like, you know, installing the casting platform so we could have a trolley motor up here. That's all made with PVC and aluminum, so rot free. We got cup holders, you know, stuff like that. I put in a little glove box for a little safekeeping for some of my things. We got a depth finder. Pretty sure I got this thing so cheap because the fella, the older gentleman I bought it off of, knew that the transom was bad and didn't feel like doing it. So he went out and bought a new boat, sold this one to me for 500 bucks. Today, it's getting a brand new updated transom. Now, this thing's needed to be done for many years. I'm pretty sure it was the original transom, 44 years old, made out of plywood. And uh, it was been rotting over the years. Uh, unfortunately, I knew this was the year I couldn't put it off again because last year I was on a camping trip out on an island, had this thing beached on the beach. The wind and the waves changed overnight and the waves were slapping up against the back of the boat, the transom, and uh, water made it over the side of the boat and filled the entire boat and pretty much sunk it on the shoreline completely full of water. So uh, it's time to do the transom. I currently have zero transom because I've already taken it out. I'll show you that in a minute. But, you know, I thought I was going to have to take off all these brackets and these support bars here. But once I did a little inspecting, I realized, you know, I had a couple through bolts here and there were screws just pinching this on. Other than that, the only thing that was keeping this top cap on was a weld right here. So I ended up just using my Dremel and cutting off that weld on both sides. This whole top piece came off. And I was able to slide the transom out once you remove all the hardware and an old boat like this has all kinds of holes in it <laughs> whole lot of fun and I'm happy I did it that way because these here were bolts that I took out these here actually riveted through the, the boat same thing here these were bolts that got down underneath there are actually rivets same thing with here these were bolts these down here are actual rivets now if I took them off I'd either have to have it professionally re-riveted because I don't have tools for this type of stuff or I'd have to you know replace those with bolts I don't want to mess with anything below the water line and I didn't have to but look at this fun stuff I pulled out of the transom look at all that rusted junk and even more fun here's the old transom it is rotten all heck oh no there's there's more multiple pieces over here this is like the, there's nothing left absolutely nothing left to this thing once I sunk the boat, I knew this thing was completely waterlogged and it's, uh, <laughs> it was definitely past due for, for the job we're doing today. Most people, when trying to tackle this project, go as cheap as possible. They go to Lowe's or Home Depot, buy some cheap plywood and paint it and throw it in there. Eh, it might work for a little bit. You should be using marine grade plywood, way more expensive, and you should be completely sealing it in like some sort of epoxy resin or something like that to make it watertight but what do we know about wood eventually water will find a way in and it will turn it to sawdust for me if i get myself into a project like this i tend to spend a little more money do it once do it right never have to do it again today we're going to make this boat great again we are not putting any more wood in this boat Another option would be to do an all aluminum transom, but that's even more money and some skills that I don't have. As you saw from the title, what we're gonna use is called Kusa board. It is a high density board reinforced with fiberglass. And let me tell you, this stuff was not easy to find, but I was able to source some. Let's go look at it. 
Welcome to the basement where I do all my boat building projects and fun things. Here's the Kusa board. Got a four by eight piece. I cut out the piece that we need for this project, but this is the stuff. You can see it's reinforced with fiberglass. It is not absorbent, so it will not absorb water. It's a perfect replacement for plywood, but unlike plywood, this stuff will never rot. You can find this stuff sold online, but the shipping is just as expensive as the product itself. I actually found a place that was almost two hours away from me that I called and was like, hey, can I come pick this stuff up so I don't have to pay for shipping? And they're like, yeah, so that's what I did. Drove two hours and this stuff wasn't cheap. Four by eight by half inch, 26 pound density, blue water, 26 Kusa composite panel for $283. Out the door, it was over 300, 375 cents. Now, if you get actual marine grade plywood, it's not that much cheaper than this stuff. And the fact that I could go get it myself, save myself some money there, I think it'll be worth it. I didn't need to purchase any special tools to work with this stuff. You know, my regular old skill saw cut out that chunk there, ended up cutting that chunk into three chunks and gluing it together. You can probably use different products to glue this stuff together, but I already had epoxy resin left over from a boat project. So I used five to one epoxy resin, thickened that with some fume silica, even threw a little bit of the chopped fibers in there for a little extra support. And what we did was blade it all out, glued it all together. I ended up sitting 200 pounds worth of dumbbells on top of this thing, clamped down the corners so they wouldn't separate, let it harden completely. That way I was left with a piece that was bigger than my transom and it was an inch and a half thick that then we could cut down to size. It glued together perfectly. I set the old transom on top of the new transom, traced this line, cut off the corners. And that's when the fun began. The old transom is an inch and a quarter thick the new transom is an inch and a half thick. And they don't call it a skill saw for nothing. I ended up just setting my skill saw to a quarter of an inch and just started making lines at the bottom until I had the lines to come off to slide into this depth here. Slide into here and on the sides into there. Because that's the only part that only needed to be an inch and a quarter. And then I took an inch and a quarter up this far so these would fit in there and everything else would be an inch and a half thick transom. Sometimes you gotta test your skills. It's called skills, Junior. And I guess I got some. Whoa. So once I had the bottom of the transom trimmed out perfectly, then I could slide it into place. Once it was into place, I had this gap here. That's when I marked out the top part of the transom to trim that. And with a little help from the jigsaw and these little spots here, boop. Now we had the transom perfectly to spec. Now the moment of truth should be a perfect fit. And the new transom is perfectly level all the way around with the edge of the boat. And of course I had to take a quarter inch off the top here so the top cap would fit right back on top but now we have an inch and a half thick transom where we had an inch and a quarter at a kusa board it'll never rot and it is strong like bull let's just throw the top cap back up here make sure it's all fitting oh yeah it's so tight oh, over there Yep, this needs to be bolted back down. That is sweet. Oh man. Yep. No bolts. So she's already ready to go. All I gotta do now is drill out my holes through the Kusa board and put my bolts in. This area here I am gonna have professionally welded, but for now I'm just gonna put a self-tapping screw in there to hold it down tight just so we can mock up all these holes on the top piece. Do you think we can reuse all these old rusty nuts? and screws and nails and bolts no we have all brand new stainless steel hardware and we're going to be dipping each one of those in the marine 5200 this stuff is for through hull fittings this is what you want for anything going through your hull i'm sure i've bored you guys enough with this video i'm not going to bore you on how to use a drill and a screwdriver so i'm going to do all my bolts and screws 
off camera and we'll come back and show the finished product. I'm only doing this videos because I know I'm gonna have a lot of people asking me how I did it. So this is just a video of showing how I did it. Okay, I lied. I'll show you how I do one of the bolts. I'm gonna put a little 5200 in my hole. When the screw comes through, I'm gonna take the excess, put that on the inside of my washer. I'm gonna add a little more 5200 inside there as well. I'm gonna, once that makes contact, I'm gonna spin it to get it all the way around so it seals. We're gonna push that in. Use our lock nut, put that on there. Then we're just gonna crank her tight. You see how the 5200 sort of oozed out around that washer? That means no water can penetrate through the hole. And besides a little cleanup, we are done. The transom is in and it is never coming back out. I'm very pleased with the results. We now have a no rot CUSA board transom in a 44 year old boat. This old transom, don't think we need it anymore. Never getting that back. So according to the CUSA company, they say this stuff is UV safe. The only thing it'll do is fade over time, but just like water damage, I don't trust the sun either. I don't mess with mother nature. So I'm just gonna paint over this, that's it. I know somebody's gonna ask me what color this is and it's slate blue. It's actually darker than I hoped it to be. Like the darker the paint, the hotter it's gonna get when you like sit down on this. So I'm not gonna do the inside in that. I'm gonna redo the whole inside in the stone gray not in this video i probably won't even make a video on it but i'm going to do a two-tone with the slate blue on the outside of the boat and the stone gray on the inside eventually no rush now hopefully this boat should outlast me and hopefully many more generations to come will enjoy it and my great grandkids are seeing this video you are welcome and uh, i think that's going to do it thank you guys for watching until next time god bless